Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. How to do? How do you do to you too? I need to stop that now. It's only supposed to go off once. We're going to try and make sense of this crazy Arizona real estate market as much as we can, because you know people always ask you, "How's real estate?" I heard that it's really slow. I heard it's really good. So I'm going to try and clear that up for you this morning, because the answer is yes to both. <laughs> All depends on where you're at. So let's take a deep dive in here to our Arizona real estate market and see what's really going on. Of course, it all starts with interest rates. Uh, Chairman Powell, who I'm now going to call Captain Obvious, said, well, you know, when rates go down, we're really low. It pushed real estate prices high. And when rates are high, it pushes real estate prices down because real estate is very interest rate sensitive. So that is your uh, <clears throat> your your big knowledge zinger for the day. Rates, 6.92, they are headed higher, which what we call a negative trend. Not alarming. Last year, they were rocking about 7.9. So it's better, but it's not great. And it's having an effect. Cromford Report, they've been saying that new listings were increasing and increasing more than, than last year. Man, I've been digging, digging, and trying to find it. And uh, so, I'm because I'm looking at my seven-day moving average, I'm going, yeah, they're increasing, but I don't see them blowing out last year, and I'll show you on the chart. But here they are now. This is like month to date here. This is January 24. They came in at 8,119, where last year they were 7,514. So they are correct. They are growing. Now, if I were to change this a little bit, which I'm probably not going to do while I'm live here, but uh, it's, <clears throat> I don't see anything astronomical going on for February. And here's why I say that. Now, when I look here, see this top line here, this the, is the blue line, which is new listings coming on over a seven day period. And it's going straight up and it's about 3,900. Let me show you the real numbers on a banner below here for you. I forgot to put that up. So that's where they're at. And uh, that looks like a huge leap. But if I go back to last year at this time, which I kind of took a chunk out of the middle of this chart so that I could show you last year, that's over here on the left-hand side. It's almost identical, isn't it, folks? So it's going up at about the same rate, same pace in new listings. And sales are following. They're following. Looked like they were going up at a higher rate than last year, but they really aren't. They're almost identical to last February. Now, last year, they everything kind of trailed off as far as new listings. Then they came back on in March. So, you know, let's see. Everybody always kind of waits for spring. Let's see what's going to happen in spring. So let's go back here and take a look at active listing count. Well, active listings, as you can see on this chart, has met last year at 14,745. My seven-day moving average right now shows us we're at 15,981. We have not popped into 16,000 yet this year. Last year, we hit, I think, 17,000, and we just haven't knocked on that. We're knocking on the door. We just haven't crossed over that number yet. So here we are sitting here at 14,000. We're right at where we were last year. So are we going to cross, and we're going to go higher? New listings. These aren't new listings. These are active listings, the homes that are for sale on the market. Are they going to decline like they did last year and the year before that and the two years before that? Or are they going to continue to go higher? They'd be bucking a trend if they continued to go higher. So the expectations, I think, in the short term are, no, I don't think they're going to go higher. Sales per month. This one's kind of a busy chart, folks. It shows you 2024. Here's January at 4,087 for the month of January. And if I go to last year, which would be right about do, 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 here, August, November, December, March, August, where the heck is January down here? Trying to find last year. They don't have it here. I'm sure they do. Here's 2023. January is going to be right in Q1 right here, 4,103. Not, not much of a difference, see? 4,103 versus 4,130, same as last year. Now, both of these years are actually historically low. So it's slow, but there are some parts of the valley. 
that are picking up at a pretty good, pretty good clip. And I'm going to show them to you. Um, oh, and for those of you waiting for foreclosures, uh, here we are. Uh, let's see. January, there were 321 pre-foreclosures. So far this month, we have 15. So hurry up out and get out there and try to find them. Uh, they're just not there. Foreclosures that you're waiting for, uh, you're going to be waiting for a while. I am afraid if that's what your goal is. <clears throat> All this being said, are house prices going up? Or are they going down? Well, it depends again on the neighborhood. For the most part, they're going up, uh, but they're not going up very fast. Let's look at the annual pace here. Annual appreciation based on monthly price per square foot. This shows you uh, for February 3rd. It's hard to see, but there's a little tiny light turquoise dot right down here that shows that we're below 10%. We're about 8% annually in prices in our market. That's our appreciation. Now, this number down here is 2023, shows that we were in negative territory starting in almost about mid-March right here. So we were in negative annual appreciation, which meant that prices were going down in you know, January and February. So April, May, and we climbed out of it in June. And then since then, we have been going up. We're starting to plateau a little bit. But I'm still seeing in the chart that shows asking prices that uh, people are pretty optimistic still. So let me try to find that uh, in a moment here. Let me go here to monthly average sales price per square foot. This is Chandler and Gilbert. Let's focus right here on Chandler. You can see the Chandler. This, you're always going to see this holiday dip this Christmas, New Year's. So we've come up. It's not lighting the world on fire as far as average sales price per square foot. We're still kind of hanging in right here. So it's not way above where we saw back here in November of, let's see, it says November 28th. I believe that would be, that would be the year before. So um, the one that's really wild here is Fountain Hills. Fountain Hills average sales price per square foot, but that's, their house is so big up there and they're expensive. So this chart really goes up and down a lot. It, you can't find a trend if you're looking at Fountain Hills. Areas like Buckeye, where there's a lot of new building going on, it's been kind of hanging in here. Uh, their price per square foot's kind of muddling around uh, on the bottom there. Nothing major. Uh, same with Maricopa. Maricopa's gone up a little bit here. They did have a rough year last year. Things are looking better. Uh, Gilbert, where are we in Gilbert? Um, they've come down just a little bit in the past week on average price per square foot. Phoenix, what are you doing? Phoenix has been coming down consistently. Not sure why, but Phoenix, after this peak that we had here of $323 per square foot, we're now sitting here down an average of 308. Nothing major, but it's on the way down. Uh, Queen Creek, a lot of new building going on out there. Certainly affected you here in the middle last year, but uh, we're kind of flattening out so far. City of Surprise, no surprises there, except they have a lot of new construction and their average price per square foot is coming down. But part of that reason for the average price per square foot in coming down too depends on the size of the home. So it's not really a median price is kind of a, maybe a better one to, to look at. But what we're seeing is Prices are not going down, folks, um, because supply is not outstretching demand. Our demand is is picking up. So it's uh, um, I'm going to try here while I've got us on here. I'm trying to find my list price per square foot. Here we are. I found it. There's so many charts on Cromford. Look at what it's doing. It's It's really showing right here the optimism of sellers right now. Um. And Harold's asking me here if, uh, do I show median sales price for Sierra Vista or the Valley only? The Valley only, unfortunately. Um, we just kind of track all of Maricopa County and some of Pinal. Unfortunately, I don't see anything else. I wish I did. I had somebody that wanted me to draw up some numbers for uh, Bullhead City, I, and I can't access that. I apologize. Uh, there is a service out there that even you could subscribe to if you wanted to, but most people don't want to pay a monthly fee, and it's called Altos, Altos Research, and he does the entire country, and you can go by county, by city. Uh, that one's great. I subscribe to the Cromford Report because 
it's very local and it's got a ton of data points. So, but you can see here, when I say about the optimism, we come out of January and everybody's like, okay, I'm going to list my house um, at a pretty good clip, $385 per square foot. And we see this every year where people come out of the gates fast, right? So we come up here, we're going to list, we're optimistic, here we go. And then we usually start to see the average list price kind of start to come down in towards the end of February through price cuts. Now, I made a comment on my show uh, live with Pat on Friday about pricing for sellers. I kind of want to clarify it just a little bit, and that is that you need to have a pricing strategy. So those people that are pricing there, they may get that. They may get that price per square foot. Some of them are pricing higher, hoping they can get it so that they can give the average of $10,000 seller concessions to buyers, and uh, that'll help them have a little money to do that. Um, some of them are just riding an optimistic wave. But if you're meeting with a real estate agent and they give you a price, okay, don't don't wrap your arms around that price. That's an opinion of value. It's an opinion of the value of the home. There's If you're interviewing five agents and you go with the agent that gives you the highest price, that's not necessarily the best move you can make. What you want is an agent and you and your partner to say, well, do we agree on this zone? So let's say that you priced your house at $500,000 and nobody looked at it in two weeks. So now the agent's going to call you and say, hey, we need to make a move. Well, you said 500,000. Well, that's not the agent you want. And that's not where your mindset needs to be. Your mindset needs to be, okay, if we all agree that 500,000 is where we should start, what if in two weeks we determine that 500,000 is too high? How far down do we want to go? Now, that doesn't mean that prices are dropping, folks. When I say that, I'm saying your asking price needs to have an adjustment if nobody's coming to look at it. That house may only be worth, if you look at comps, at four seventy-five. dollars but you wanted to test and try to get $500,000. Nothing wrong with that. But if you truly need to sell and you have all agreed that $500,000 is where you need to start, you also need to agree on what kind of moves you're going to make from that point on. So if you're at $500,000, nobody's even shown it in two weeks. You're too high. Okay, so now you got to make an adjustment. Rather than having that being an uncomfortable conversation between you and your agent, know ahead of time. Hey, if nobody looks at this in two weeks, are we going to go down 10000 or 20000 Know what that move's going to be. Now, you and your partner, you need to know what your bottom line is. How low are we will? What's the lowest price we're willing to take on this house? Now, real estate agents have a fiduciary duty not to share that number. However, you have nothing to gain by sharing that number. So I'm not saying that most real estate agents will spit that number out, but don't put that number in the back of their head. Don't, don't give them that burden of having a number in their head that they're not supposed to know. Because sometimes they'll see a number come in. You said, we're going to list it at 500,000, but you know what? We're willing to go down to 475. Okay, well, if there's an offer that comes in at 485, the agent can't help but go, well, this might not be a bad offer because, you know, they're willing to go down to 475. So uh, I won't fight as hard as I normally would for 485. Keep that number close to the vest, my friends. That's what I would do. And uh, like I say, not because I don't trust real estate agents, but I just, you know, you have nothing to gain by saying, you know, hey, 475, we will go down there, but we don't want to if we don't have to. So that's where I'd take that. Now, take a look at this. This is an interesting article I ran into. And guess what? Home buyers want baby boomers to update their homes, damn it. <laughs> you know, we realize that you baby boomers are not selling us the homes. But if you do, could you please upgrade it? Man, look at this. I see this more than you realize. Young move-up home buyers are growing increasingly worried the baby boomers, many of whom are staying put in their current home, won't update their properties and pass down costly renovations and repairs to the next generation of homeowner, homeowners, according to a new start, study from Morning Consult and Leaf Homes. They're basically showing here that here's the list of things here. It's hard to read on this chart. Percent who currently have no plans to do an activity, like a new addition to the house. 97% of them said, ah, I don't have any plans to do that. Makes sense. Replacing furniture, AC, 83% go, nope. Not going to do it. 
make this chart just a little bit bigger here for you. Um, replace roofing or siding. 80% are saying no, really. You're going to sell a house with a bad roof? Uh, millennials are not going to take that on. Adding safety accessibility fixtures. Well, no, you wouldn't anyway. Um, 85%. Changes that allow you to stay in the home for longer. Um, 82%, uh, which have lived in the home 10 years or less, are saying no. Lived in the home more than 25 years, 71% said nope. Uh, but here's the silly one here. Replacing large appliances. They won't even do that. Major landscaping or outdoor projects. So well over two-thirds of baby boomers that have been in their home more than 11 to 25 years are saying, well, we're not, we're not really going to do anything. Those old light bulbs that you see in the bathroom uh, and that worn-out countertop, uh, we're, we're not going to change it. I was in an estate sale in Sun Lakes on Saturday morning. Oh, this house. I, you talk about not renovating. I've never seen kitchen cabinets as ugly as the ones that were in. I can't even describe them to you. They're so bad. And the kitchen island kind of came out and then had a little turn to it. It was the most awkward kitchen. The bathroom was yellow, um, but it was a different color of yellow. It was like vomit yellow. <laughs> it was just awful. The carpet going into the master, the closet, the big walk-in closet was, was white with a, like a black landing strip on it. I mean, it was so worn out. So that does happen that some of these homes, they're just not going to fix them up, but that's an over 55 community. Investors love it down there. They love making, picking up those kind of properties so they can fix it up for you. And, but as millennials, you know, they're coming in, they don't have a lot of money. Some of them do, but they'd rather use it for their down payment and uh, not come in and have to make $50,000 worth of improvements. So think about that. If you're trying to sell it, there are loan products out there that will allow you to improve your home. Uh, pandemonium here. So I have to watch the replay flying out to San Diego for a three day sales meeting. Boy, I used to do that. <laughs> Hit that like on the way out. Got that. I appreciate it. Have good luck out there, but man, it's going to be wet. LA is supposed to get seven inches of rain between yesterday and today it's brutal out there we're going to get some of that fortunately not all of that so this is your update for the arizona real estate market i hope you found something useful do me a favor smash that like button and subscribe take care have a good monday